All right, what's up, Colorado Music Buzz? This is Link. We got Sage Francis. We're gonna hug here. We Link. Kinda, Link. Yeah. See that? <laughs> we can be friendly and not homophobic. It's pretty sweet. We can be friendly and homophobic too. Whatever you gotta do. I'm not afraid of you. No, no. I'm not gay though. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? So it's uh, okay. We got we got Sage. This man this man is a, a hip hop icon at this point, in my opinion anyway. Or he's getting there. He'll probably uh, uh, yeah. beg to differ. Fifty years from now maybe. Icon status. I gotta I just gotta grind it out for forty more years. That's all. So we're here in Mile High City, Colorado, Denver, Colorado, right behind the Gothic Theater. Yeah. This thing's been around for about 80 years now, 90 years. And uh, this is what, your second, third, fourth time playing at the Gothic? I lost count. I've played here a lot of, many times. I think the first time I played the Gothic was with Atmosphere, um, or maybe maybe there was another one, but that was back in 2001, 2000. And uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite venues. The setup's cool. You've got the two balconies like right up like I get to look at the people sitting down, being all cushy. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're afraid to get dirty down on the floor. And you got I, the best of both worlds. Yeah, I reach out and touch somebody. So you guys, uh, you guys are pretty busy this summer. You got like what, 36 shows in 45 mm -hmm. days, some, some around there. Yeah, we well, we played more than that. We didn't announce every show. We had some secret private shows that we just like sprung up at the spur of the moment. But um, yeah, 36 official shows on the Life on the Road tour. That's with B. Dolan and Free Moral Agents. We got some wind going on. Nice. We got we got wind. You know, it's an energy source that we can harness. I'm gonna block the wind. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do the interview like go. this. There you go. Hey, that's perfect. So, um, let me find my note card. Where did that go? So you got a new album, Life. Life. It's got the parentheses around the F because life is just a lie. With an F in it. And death is definite. Word up. <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. Now, something that I was really, um, really interested in on this album was, Sage, you always have a flair and a knack for turning like colloquialisms and, and cliches and flipping them around and your wordplay is just incredible. And something that really stuck out in my mind on this album was in, Poltergei in Polter Zeitgeist, which is that by itself is an amazing title. People get upset at that title. They, they used it as a reason why the album sucked. <laughs> They're like, someone who says the word Polter Zeitgeist sucks. That was me. That was him. And um, one of the lines is a nicotine eye patch. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the quickest way to get nicotine into your body if you have a problem. And <clears throat> I have a lot of friends who have that problem and they chose to put the patch on their eye and it goes like directly in through the uh, octal, uh, whatever you call them, through the optic iris. nerves, yeah. And you just get your buzz that, that much much more quickly and it's more effective. Nice. Now speaking of uh, stimulants, you're uh, you're quite a clean guy yourself, right? Not really. No? I've, I haven't really, I don't feel clean. But just in terms of like, you don't really drink, you don't really do none of that stuff. I don't really, I don't really know how to have fun. <laughs> I don't see this is why this is awkward right now. I don't know how to have fun, man. <laughs> this is my fun after like the after sound check. I get to hang out with Link. Me. Which I'm happy about. Even though I'm kinda skinny, I don't know if I'd keep a Marmot night. No. No. So you got a you this album, it's a bunch of collaborations with some live bands and that's incredible. The logistics I was reading, you know, that what took like three years to do. Yeah, um, Two years, once we started getting the ball rolling, once we started getting demos from various bands and musicians, originally I wanted to have one, just work with one band through a whole album, but it didn't work out that way. And um, we reached out to a bunch of different people who would send in their demos of their own music, and I would write to that. Some of it worked, some of it didn't. And the stuff that did work out, we just waited till we had enough demos to constitute a trip to the studio and like, bang it all out within a month's time and yeah so f from when I first started getting those demos and writing to them to being in the studio and recording them that was two years in length and, and that was all done in Chicago right yep that was recorded in Chicago at engine studio with uh, Brian Deck who produced the record and he's familiar with that's his turf I mean we went to Chicago because that's where he's based out of and Califone who played throughout the album they're based in Chicago and they work with Brian Deck all the time it's just those that's how the cards fell on the floor and 
we so, picked them up. So would a session be like <clears throat> the band would come out and you guys would all do it together or would they lay down a track and then you would go do the vocals later or were you all working at the same time? Um, it changed. We Sometimes we what we had to do was rehearse the songs together first because they didn't write every song. Um, the other bands who wrote stuff, Califone had to learn those songs and then they added their own twist to that, that writing. And we had to rehearse together. So we had a few days where it was just me and them um, playing the songs live and getting a feel for it, trying to find the right energy for the song. And then they would lay down their tracks in the studio, but I would also record the vocals at the same time because you got to do that to make sure you get the right feel and make sure they know where all the cues are at. Right. Um, we kept a couple rough vocals. There's a song called 16 Years, and that was my rough vocal take. That wasn't like originally recorded for the final take, but we liked the way it sounded. And there was another one. Uh, Best of Times was, uh, well, we didn't record all the, that music in the studio. That's the only one that we didn't record in the studio, but that was my rough take, because I, I had to bang that out real quick. That was the one that was composed, right? Mm. It was like a French composer? Yeah, Yann yeah, Tiersen, he's uh, from France, and we share the same booking agent, and I don't know, we, I was very lucky to get some music from him. He's a, he's a genius, and that song is one of my favorites, so I'm really happy that happened. That was a nice, yeah. it was a nice departure. Well, once, they, once all the tracks were recorded, I usually went back in the studio, we, we spent um, I think a week or maybe four or five days of just focusing on me recording my vocal takes and so we could weigh the options of do we want to keep the rough take, go with the new take, blah blah blah. So now if say you had your choice, you had just any dream team band, dead alive, whatever, just you could sit down and have one session with maybe who just comes to mind? <clears throat> um, shoot, I'd love to sit down with um, Neil Young and Crazy Horse just get real loud and nasty and good answer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> even though I I hear they're not super tight as a band, but there's something about that outfit that really works for me. So I'd like to try something out. Nice. So if you're listening, Neil. Yeah, I've been hollering attention. at you, homeboy. You know we know you know we got people who know people and should happen by now. You did some stuff with Eddie Vedder and come on I, down from Canada. It, it always rains in my heart for you. Um, Shepard Fairey. <laughs> Shepard Fairey designed your album cover. Yeah. So if you guys don't know, um, Shepard Fairey is the guy who designed the iconic poster of Barack Obama. Yeah, before that, the way I even knew him was the Andre uh, Obey campaign. And, and he started that in Providence, which is my city. And um, I've always been surrounded by his artwork. and intrigued by it too just 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 the imagery and the constant use of that one image and um it was on everything the stickers and the wheat pasting and um it influenced my my own branding the sage francis uh the strange famous logo and the the mutton shop picture that i used that he he redid on the cover that originally was inspired by him so to go full circle and finally the way i just hollered at neil young is the way i hollered at him for many years and it, it worked out for me so persistence works very nice